How's it guys? I'm back. Uh, sorry about the long absence, but uh, one of you guys commented below one of my videos. You said do key values, so that's what that's what we're doing today. Um, I pulled this key value file out of um, excuse me. I pulled this key value file out of a plugin that was posted on the Allied Mods forum. Um, this plugin is Spluis's multi 1v1 arenas plugin for CSGO. And, gosh, excuse me. And, um, yeah, this will be a good little test. Uh, basically, we'll talk about what key value function, or what, what key value files do, um, their structure, and basically how to parse them. So first, what do key values do? Key values are basically a way for us to format data in such a way that it can be easily modified by someone who doesn't know how to program, which is very important for server configuration, um, usability, customize, customization. Uh, anything that can be modified can be put either into a console variable, like a convar, uh, or they can be put into a key values file like this. So. Presumably, Spluis made this such that if someone doesn't like weapon AK-47 as a terrorist, they can, you know, switch in some other weapon and then the terrorists will be able to use that, you know. So, yeah, so I guess we'll, yeah, so so every every keyvalus file has a name. Uh, this name is weapons. Usually this can be the file name of, you know, that what, what it actually is. So but just for this video, I named it test.cfg. Um, but a lot of the time, you'll just name this weapons.cfg. It's not important though. But this is kind of the root key, the main node of the entire key values file. It basically tells you what's in it. And then this is the next key that goes down. Um, so this is rifles. And, you know, obviously that's gonna, these are gonna be the rifles. Um, everything here, these are all sub keys because they belong to this. And then these are all sub keys because they belong to the pistols group. So let's go ahead and uh, yeah, get, get into parsing. Stop, uh, I'll stop talking. Um, sorry if that was loud, I'm just adjusting my mic. Okay. So the first thing we always do is we include source mod, right? We need the tools to be able to do what we wanna do. Uh, next, we're gonna go into on plugin start. Uh, usually what I like to do is I like to create a function to parse the KV files, so we'll do something like parse KV, because, you know, that's that's a name that works. Uh, cool, so this will be our actual function. Uh, this might be important if you need to reparse it later, it's better to just move it out because this can get kind of big and lengthy, so we just want to avoid this taking up all of unplug and start. Uh, that'll be more obvious later. Um, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to declare some space for the file path. Um, max path. Basically, the file path of the actual configuration file in the source mod installation, we need to we need to know where the file is. So the way to do that is to go into a function called build path. Uh, path underscore source mod will take us to the source mod folder. And then uh, we give it the string name. So this is our path variable. Uh, we have to give it the size of the path variable. And then uh, we're gonna pick what our file name is. So we're in the install, we're in the source mod installation right now. So we need to go to the configs folder because that's where we'll, we'll be putting this file. And we'll just keep calling it test.cfg. And boom, now we have our file path. Um, now what we're going to do, we're going to make sure that the file path exists. Um, so we can check if not, right, if not file exists. Um, and then we'll just give it the path. So if the file doesn't exist, then uh, we'll set fail state. This basically puts the plugin into a state where obviously it failed. I mean, that's the name of the function, but uh, set fail state will stop the stop the plugin where it is right now and just spit out whatever I'm about to type here. So we'll just say configuration file uh, s is not found. 
and then we'll give it the variable path. So boom. So if the function, uh, so if, if this file doesn't exist, whether someone didn't copy it or something else happened, you know, some wonky stuff, uh, configuration file is not there. So we'll just error. So that way they know what's wrong. Um, a big part of, uh, quite frankly, any any development is making sure that user errors are readable, understandable, and um, they make sense, right? If have you, How many times have you opened up a program and you've gotten some weird error that doesn't make any sense to you? Um, we can all be a part of the people that change that. Um, it's just it's just about providing uh, reasonable error statements and doing it reliably, do it on everything. So we'll probably end up seeing a lot of error statements here, but that's that's a good thing. That's a good thing for sure. Uh, so if the file doesn't exist, we'll just return out of the function. This isn't really that necessary because this set fail state will stop this execution anyway, but you know, we should do it because I say so. Uh, so now we need to create our key values structure. So we'll do key values, kv equal to new key values. We'll call it weapons. Awesome. Uh, why are we calling it weapons? Because that is what this string is. Now we'll do if kv dot import from file uh, and then the file name is just going to be the path so if we can't import from file then we ran into another error so let's go ahead and copy set, set fail state here uh, we'll say unable to parse and we'll just we'll, we'll, we'll tell it that it's a uh, key values file. Unable to parse key values file percent s. Cool, that makes sense to me. Um, awesome, now that we have that, what's the what's the first? Okay, so we're, we need to go into the rifle section first, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So if not kv dot jump to key. So if we're unable to jump to this key, then once again, we have another error. So we'll set fail state. Awesome. So if we can't jump to that key, then this will happen. If it can jump to the key, then we'll just go further down in the code. So right now we are in the rifle section. We are right here. So now we need to parse these sub keys, right? We're already here. We're already at the first one. So um, actually, no, no, we're not at the first one. We're kind of like here right now. Um, so we will go to the first sub key. So if we cannot uh, go to first sub key, so if we can't do this, then once again, uh, th by the way, these don't always have to set be set fail state. Um, if you don't like, um, if you don't like just ending it and just saying, no, this is wrong, things are bad, then you know you can silently let it fail. It's all up to you as to what you do with this. Um, you could have this function return true or false as to whether or not something happened. Um, it's just it's just all up to you, all up to how you design it. But for this test plugin, if anything goes wrong, we're just going to blow it up. It's it's broken. You know, we're 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 not going to let anything slide. Um, so if we're un if we're unable to go from here to here, whether or not you know maybe there's no nothing in here, perhaps this file looks like this. You know, that's entirely possible. Um, but if it does look like that, we are just going to let it fail because you know we don't we don't want it so. So now we are here. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to say uh, do while, and we'll fill out this while loop later. Um, do you get, did, have I talked about the difference between a do while and a while loop? Uh, if I haven't, I'm just going to do this real quick. Um, 
So while we'll check the condition, so while while that's true, which you know whatever, run code, um, and it'll only run the code in here if this evaluates to true. How do while's work is it'll always do the first one. The f this will always execute, and then while this condition is true, it'll go back again. So it's just the difference on whether or not the first one runs. Um, hopefully that made sense. I ran through that pretty fast. Uh, if you don't understand, let me know. But now we are going to actually parse the sections. So uh, we'll allocate a string for the section name. So we'll just make that like something big. Um, and then we'll allocate another name for name. And then we'll allocate the team that it's supposed to be on. I think that's right. Section name, name, team. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Uh, we can make this like entity if we want, because this will be the entity for AK47. I mean, sure. Uh, so we have these strings allocated. We have space for them. Now let's actually get the strings. So we'll do something like kv.get section name. Um, we're going to get entity size of entity. So we have our entity name. We're going to do kv. Uh, get string. We'll get the name of the gun. So this will go into name, size of name. And then we're going to get the team. Cool. So we have our section name, we have the actual name, and we have team. Uh, and if you guys didn't catch it, this string here just correlates to what what this value is. Um, so for every property inside of a sub key, so every key values pair, um, they're they're all named. So this this type of structure. Uh, is called key values because for every key, which is this, you're, you're going to have a value, which is this guy. So it's a very common thing in computer science as a whole. Uh, key values as a term, um, maps and dictionaries and other data structures use key values. So just kind of a good thing to keep in the back of your head. Um, and of course, that applies here. So you have to learn it. Um, Awesome, so we have our first section. So now we wanna do this, because we we're already there, right? Go to first sub key, we're already here. So, and we got all of our information. Now we have to go to this one. So to do that, we're gonna use the do while loop. So while kv dot go to next key. So now we're here and we're gonna go here. Awesome, and because this is a while loop, there's going to be a next key. We'll end up going there. We'll end up going there. We'll end up going there. And this will just loop. Um, in order to tell that this worked, we're going to have to um, print something out. So print to server. Uh, percent s. Yeah, we'll do percent s. Percent s. So we're going to pass it the entity name. We're going to pass it the actual name and then team. That way we can actually see it working here. Um, cool. Now we did everything in the rifles section. We're still in here, right? So once we're done, we have to, we have to go back and do pistols. So let's go ahead and go back. We're going to call kv.rewind, right? What this is going to do, it's going to take us all the way back to here, right? We, we're just going to go all the way back. And then we're going to do some copy pasting. Now, instead of rifles, we're going to pistols. Uh, unable to find pistol section. Um, and now we are, we should be here. Let me double check. Go to first sub key. Yep. So now we're going to go do the pistol section and we're going to do this as well. We're just going to copy paste that because everything's the same. And we should be good. Let me make sure it compiles. Yes, it does. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and test this in game. Um, let's see. So here's our plugin. And I'm gonna go into the source mod thing here. Yep, 
We're going to go to plugins. Awesome. And now we are going to start the server. Awesome. So we're, we're already seeing it come through here. We're already seeing this. So we have all of the weapons. So AK-47 to SSG-6. And then we have all the pistols down here. So that's that's the basic tutorial on how key value functions or how key value files work. Um, this is how to jump between sections, how to parse things. Uh, it's entirely possible. Let, let, let's go. Let's go ahead and change this. Let's change pistols. Let's remove pistols and we'll remove this. So we'll make everything in its own thing like this. Let's say you wanted your file to look something like this, right? This will be simple as well. So if you just have, if you don't have any need for sections, uh, we can just, you know, just as easily remove the sections. So we can do something like this where we, let's see, we won't jump to key rifles, right? We'll just stay in the first sub key and we don't need any of this anymore because there's no more two sections. So, let's see, we're still going to weapons. Let's just, uh, let's just try this. Oh, one more thing I really forgot that you absolutely need to do. You need to do this. You need to delete the key value file. Every time we use new, we use, every time we use new, we have to use delete at the end of it. If we're done using it, which we are because we're not, we're done parsing, we need to delete it. Don't forget that. And then obviously we return. So let's go ahead and try this and see how, how this works. So, oh, whoops, this is getting in the way. There we go. So let's go ahead and go into our source mod. There we go. Go to plugins, we'll move our new test over. Um, we also have to change the configuration file. So I'm gonna go to my source mod installation and I'm just changing uh, test wherever it may be. Whoops. Configs. Test. There we go. So I'm changing that. And now SM plugins. Whoops. I'm just going to restart the server. Okay. I don't know what happened there. SM plugins. Reload test. Yep. It still worked. Cool. So yeah, that's, that's basically how that's done. Um, if you guys want to practice this yourself, go to, go to multi one V ones, uh, GitHub page, uh, find their weapons key values. I can put it in a link in the description and you should be good to go. Man, this video turned out long. We're at 18 minutes and almost 30 seconds here, but yeah. Uh, let me know if that helped you guys and uh, thumbs up, thumbs down, leave a comment. Let me know what you want me to do next because otherwise I won't think of one myself. Um, have a good one guys. Bye.